Hi everyone. Today we're going to be doing a landscape together. And a landscape is just simply an outdoor picture. It can be a drawing, it can be a painting, it can even be a photograph. But it's an outdoor picture and it, it can include lots of different things. It can have trees, it can have bushes, grass, flowers, rocks, waterfalls. There can be animals in the landscape. There can even be people. Uh, our landscape today is gonna be fairly simple. I mean, not simple to do, but simple as far as what's in the picture. We're not gonna put people in the picture or animals. We're just gonna put some trees and grass and flowers and maybe some mountains and a blue sky and maybe a sun. So it might be hard to see this right now, but I'll show it to you a little bit more close up. So here's a close up of the landscape we're gonna to draw together. And you can see that we're gonna draw trees and flowers. It's gonna be fun. Here is a landscape by a famous artist who's from Canada. His name is Kevin Dodds. And you can see all the things he included in his landscape. There's a woman picking apples from the tree. There are benches. There are baskets of apples. And you can even see if you look close up like this, you can see there's a rooster. So you can put all kinds of things in your landscape. But for us today, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna use trees and grass and flowers. So before we do our landscape, we're gonna practice drawing some trees together. And we've done trees in class before. Um, in fact, not too long ago, we did probably one of our last um, speed drawings together, we did three different types of trees. Remember that? Um, one was a palm tree, one was a evergreen tree, and one was just a typical tree you might see in your backyard. So uh, that's the kind of tree we're going to do today. So let's just practice again drawing a tree and I'm just going to show you a simple way of drawing it. So you might remember that I talked about a letter Y. And if we think of a capital letter Y, a capital letter Y looks like that. But we want it to be like a more like a block letter. Do you know what a block letter is? If I drew a letter L, a capital letter L, it would look like that. And if I made it into a block letter, I would add another side to it. I would have two sides to the letter, like a letter E would be like this, okay? So those are block letters. So we wanna turn this Y into more of a block letter Y. So all we need to do is draw another line there, another line there, and another line here. And then all we would need to do is erase that little line. So there we have a block letter Y, we just haven't closed it off here. So that's how we want to draw our um, basic shape of our tree trunk and tree branch. Um, but we want to keep something else in mind. Usually these branches are skinnier or thinner than the tree trunk. So if I draw a capital letter Y like this, and we're just practicing right now, so you can follow along with me, or if you need to pause the video, you can pause the video and practice. But we're gonna do the same thing we did here, only this time we wanna make these branches maybe a little skinnier. See how close I'm putting that line? And then maybe this one stays fat. I could even make it a little fatter like that. So I have a fatter tree trunk, I have a fatter bottom and a skinnier top. Now that's a very simple tree trunk with two branches. If you would like to make it a little, um, a little fancier, a little more um, 
realistic because in real life, tra trees don't have just two branches. Usually they have lots and lots of branches, right? So what you can do is add another little branch like this, and this turns into a letter Y. See how it's a letter Y, only this time it's more like maybe a lowercase letter Y. So if you just think of letter Ys and letter Vs, you can also think of letter Vs. So here I'm making a letter V. We can add more branches to our tree. See that? And notice how these branches are much smaller. They should be much smaller than say our tree trunk. Okay, so let's try that again on another piece of paper. We're gonna do a big capital letter Y, big capital letter Y. Now we're gonna turn it more into a block letter Y or we're gonna add the other side to it and I'm gonna keep these a little bit more skinny and this one I'm gonna make a little fatter. And I'm gonna add just a couple more skinny branches here. Maybe I'll even add one little one right here. All right. Now, you can erase these lines now if you want, or you could outline it with marker and then erase. I'll show you that in just a minute. But let's do a tree top. So for the tree top, we're gonna think of a cloud and hopefully you guys remember this from when we did it in class and we talked about how this is like a cloud, right? So that's basically gonna be the shape of our tree top. But what I want you to try to do is maybe make some little and some big some little and some big. So try not to have them all be the same size. That's kind of like the next step up from doing your tree like this. The first step is just having them all the same size like that, okay, like a big cloud. But the next step, again, is trying to make some small, some big, some small, some big, okay? So let's do that on our tree. Some small, maybe small, medium, and large. So maybe that's a medium one, and then a small one, and then a big one. And it doesn't have to be in a pattern, so you don't have to go small, medium, large, small, medium, large, like that, you can just do two medium ones, then a large one, then a small one, and just kind of mix it up. Okay, and if we do that, our trees will start to look a little more realistic. Not that everything has to be realistic, but you know, there's lots of different styles of art, but for now, we're just trying to make our trees a little bit more realistic. You can even add a couple little lines here at the tops of your branches if you want. You don't have to, but you could. Okay, so there's our tree. So we've practiced a tree. Now let's get started on our landscape. Okay, so again, a landscape is just an outdoor picture. It's a picture of the outside. So it could be a picture of a beach, it could be a picture of your backyard, it could be a picture of the park. Um, any of those would be landscapes. And so we're gonna turn our paper sideways like this, okay, which is horizontal. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a horizon line. And a horizon line is the line that separates the earth from the sky. Now it could be grass, it could be water, it could be rocks, um, but whatever that earth is, it separates, um, the horizon line separates that from the sky. It's also the furthest point that you can see in your picture. So when you look at your picture, the farthest thing away you're gonna see on the, on the ground at least, is your horizon. So 
we're just gonna do a straight line and on your paper, maybe find the middle of your paper this way and come up just a little bit higher, a little bit higher than the middle. So instead of making the line way down here, let's make it up a little higher on the paper like that. So there is our horizon line. Okay, and now we're just going to draw some wavy lines. We're gonna draw two wavy lines, kind of like, oh, you might think of it as rolling hills. Okay, so there's one wavy line and now I'm gonna wave it the other way. All right, so now I have some rolling hills and what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw different things that are in different places on our landscape. What do I mean by that? Well, a landscape is made up of three parts, the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. The background is the things that are really far away from, the, from us, and those are usually way up near the top of the paper near the horizon line. Because remember I said the horizon is the furthest thing on the ground away from you, right? Um, unless you have mountains, maybe that's the farthest thing away from you and we can draw some mountains too in our picture. But uh, those are the things in the background. The things in the middle ground are gonna be more in the middle of the paper. And those are things that might be a little bit far away from you, but not too far. And then foreground is all the things that are up close to you in the front. And those are usually things that are near the bottom of the page, or at least they start at the bottom of the page. Okay, so that'll all make sense to you, more sense to you as we start to draw. It might not make a lot of sense now, but let's start to draw. So we're gonna draw three trees in our picture. And let me show you one that I got started already. So here, see this big tree? This big tree, I would say, is in the middle ground because it starts right about here, almost in the middle of my paper, and it's kind of close to me, but it's not, it's not as close as this flower. Do you see that flower that I drew down at the bottom? So it's, I would say that's in the middle ground. These are kind of in the middle ground too, but they're further away much further away than this tree. How do you know it's further away? Well, they're much smaller, aren't they? These trees are much smaller than this tree, and they're also a little bit closer to my horizon line. Do you see my horizon line? My horizon line is right here. Okay, so we're gonna draw three trees. We're gonna draw a big one and then two smaller ones, and the further away they go, the smaller they're gonna get. So let's start with this big one right here. Instead of starting at the bottom, we're gonna start at this line right here. So I'm gonna draw that big letter Y that we practiced. Here's my big capital letter Y. Now I'm gonna do the other side of it and turn it into more of a block letter like we talked about with a fat tree trunk. And then I'm gonna add a couple more small branches. Maybe one right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the top of the tree, just like we practiced. So curved lines, and I'm gonna to try to do different sizes. So some small, some big, some medium. So see how I'm doing different sized curved lines, and you can go right off the edge of the page like that if you'd like. Now, when we get to the outlining and coloring part, then I'll erase those lines, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it, okay? We'll do that later. So there's one tree, and I went pretty fast, so you can pause the video and draw your tree, and then start the video again. Okay, so I guess we could count this tree as being in the foreground. It is pretty big. So let's say that's the foreground. And then we're gonna draw two more trees in the middle ground. And that means we're gonna keep them more in the middle of the paper and they're gonna be a little bit smaller, actually quite a bit smaller this time. 
So the more you do these trees, the easier they will get. The more you practice, right? The better you get. So let's do one right here. So I'm gonna do my big capital letter Y, but notice how much smaller, smaller it is this time than this one. Also notice, do you see how I go past my horizon line? I overlap the horizon line. So that's fine, you can do that. No worries. All right, so now I'm gonna do the other side of my letter Y, make the tree trunk a little fatter, maybe add in another little tree branch, and then I'm gonna do the tree top. So again, some big, some little, some medium. And I'm going very fast, so you can pause the video and get caught up. Okay, so see how that tree is much smaller than that tree? So that tree is further away from us. And now we're gonna do one more, and this one's gonna be even smaller. So see where I started this tree? I started it below this wavy line. So this time, this tree, I'm gonna start above that wavy line. And my Y is gonna be even smaller, and I'm overlapping that tree a little bit. That's okay, we can decide which one we wanna erase later. Okay, now I'm gonna do the tree top. Okay, so again, I went fast. I know you're not gonna be able to go that fast, but you can pause the video and draw your tree. So we have three trees. We have a big one in the foreground, we have a medium one in the middle ground, and then we have a small one also in the middle ground. Okay, so now, just so we don't get confused and maybe just to take a little break, maybe we should outline and color. Okay, so I'm gonna take a marker. You can use a Sharpie if you want or any other kind of marker, or you could just use your colored pencil. And I'm gonna outline just the pencil lines that I wanna save. So there are some pencil lines I don't wanna save. The ones I don't wanna save are this line right here, this line, these little lines, okay? So all of those I want to erase because I don't want them to be there anymore. Okay, and now I'm gonna do my green tree top. So I'm tracing over my lines with my marker. And remember I said you can go right off the edge of the page if you want. And then I'm gonna erase the lines I don't wanna save here. See that horizon line that goes right through my tree? I wanna get rid of that. Okay, so now my tree is outlined and I can color it with colored pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and color mine. Why don't you pause the video and then you can color yours. So I finished coloring my tree. Hopefully you finished coloring yours too. And now on these other trees, remember when I said you could decide later which lines you wanna erase, which tree you want to be in front? I think this little tree that's further away from us, obviously since it's further away from us, it should be in the background behind this tree. So we should erase this part. That makes the most sense, doesn't it? So if we erase that, that tree will be behind this tree. And that makes the most sense, right? Since this tree is further away, it wouldn't make sense for this one to be in front. So that's why I wrote erase those lines. All right, so now I'm gonna outline just the lines I want to save. So 
So I'm doing my tree top like this. And you can better see now how this tree is behind because it's further away from us. It's further into the background, even though we're saying this is the middle ground. Okay, so now that I outlined, I can go ahead and erase the lines I don't need, including the horizon line. See how the horizon line went right through my trees? Oop, and I see a little line I forgot to outline. This little line right here, this little curved line, part of my tree. Okay, so now I'm ready to color my trees with colored pencil. So I'll go ahead and do that. You pause the video and you can go ahead and color your trees. Okay, so I colored my trees. Hopefully you've colored your trees too. And I don't know if you noticed, but I decided to use a different color green on this tree. So that's something you can do too. You don't have to color all your trees the same color green. I did these two with the same green and then I used a different lighter shade of green on this tree. So that might be a fun way to uh, add a little extra color, extra different um, shades of color to your landscape. All right, so now we're gonna draw some flowers. And here's that other drawing that I had started before. And you'll notice that I have some flowers in my foreground, which means they're in the front, they're very close to me. So these flowers are gonna be big and then I have some other flowers that are further away from me. And so these flowers are much smaller. So you can draw the flowers any way you want. I just did the simple, simple shape of a circle and then petals around it, kind of like a daisy flower. So, I'm going to draw some big flowers right here, nice and big, in my foreground. But again, you can make them any kind of flower you want. And they're really big because they're really close to me. So I would do at least three, but you can do more than three if you want. You might want to put some on the left side, and then I'm going to put a couple over here. So maybe I'll put... Maybe I'll put two here on the right side. Okay, so I have three on the left and two on the right. But again, you can do more flowers if you want. So those are my flowers in the foreground. Now let's put some flowers maybe more towards the middle ground in this section above our wavy line. So these are gonna be much, much smaller. These are gonna be more like tiny little flowers. Okay, so I have tiny little flowers that are far away, or not far away, but farther away than these flowers. Okay, then what we're gonna do is up here on our, at the top of our page in our background, we're gonna do a couple things. First, we're gonna do a wavy line. And it's kind of a bumpy, uneven wavy line. And that is going to be a tree line. We're gonna to try to make it look like there is a whole bunch of trees really, really, really far away on the horizon. And they're so far away that we don't really see trees individually. We just see the tops of the trees as a wavy line. So see how I did that? Just kind of a bumpy, let me show you on another piece of paper just kind of a bumpy, up and down, wiggly, wiggly line like that. That's gonna be our trees way off in the distance. And I don't know how much room you have. I drew my trees pretty big, so I don't have a lot of room. You might have more room than me. And remember I said we could add mountains in here? Well, I don't have much room for mountains, but you can see on this picture, and maybe I'll outline them a little bit. Here's some mountains that I drew in my first picture. So if you want to draw mountains, 
maybe above this tree line, you just draw an angled line and then maybe another angled line. When I draw mountains, I try not to draw them too spiky like this. Okay, that's a little too spiky and a little too maybe um, extreme for a mountain, unless it's, I don't know, Mount Everest or the highest mountain in the whole world. <laughs> um, I try to make them a little lower with a bumpy line like this. So it's kind of similar to this, but it's not curvy and wiggly. It's more straight lines, but it's up and down lines like that. So this one isn't too bumpy, but I have some mountains there. And if you have room, you can draw a sun. You don't have to draw a sun, but if you want to, you can draw a big sun in the sky, okay? I don't know if I like it right in the middle though. Maybe I'll put my sun just kind of hidden partially by this tree off to the side a little bit. Okay, so all I need to do now is outline and color, but I am going to add a little bit of grass. And so for grass, I'm just going to use my green marker. And in the foreground, my grass is going to be tall and kind of big. And I'm just going to use some little lines. And notice how I'm going up. And I'm kind of flicking. See how I'm kind of flicking my marker up a little bit in different directions. So there's some grass in the foreground. For the grass in the middle ground, or the grass that's a little bit further away from us, we want it to be much smaller, right? So I'm doing just little lines that are much smaller and I can do some right over my, look, I can do some right over my tree. And for grass way back here, you might really not see it, but you can do a couple little tiny lines. And that's about it. These lines you can trace with your green marker. So uh, the flowers, you can do any colors you want. So I'm gonna start outlining and coloring and you can do the same. So why don't you pause the video and we'll meet back again in just a minute. Okay, so I've colored almost all of it, but I've left a little bit to show you a couple things about coloring. Um, first of all, you, you might notice that I used a couple different greens in my grass. So back here, I used the lighter green and up front in the foreground, I'm using a darker green. And, um, just a couple things I want to remind you about coloring. When we're coloring, we always wanna try and stay in the same direction. So if I'm coloring this way, side to side, I don't wanna all of a sudden switch directions and start coloring up and down, okay? You can see your lines on your, on your drawing, uh, your coloring lines. So that's why we wanna always try to stay in the same direction. Now, when it gets to the edge, like over here on the edge, you might have to go up and down on the edge, that's okay. But for the rest of it, stay in one direction. Don't keep switching. Also, when I get down to my flowers, what I did is I just kind of slowly went around my flower petals with some green first, and then I colored in the space next to it, okay? Also, you've heard me say this a lot, don't press hard with your pencil. Now, sometimes with colored pencils, sometimes we wanna press hard so that we get a really bold, bright, color, but when we're coloring something really big like this, a large area, we don't want to press hard because first of all, it's going to make our hand hurt. We're going to get tired and we're not going to want to finish coloring. 
Um, also, it's hard to keep that same pressure all the way through. So the harder you press, the harder it is gonna be to make your grass all look the same. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, one more thing, you might notice that your pencil sometimes is higher on one side than the other. When you go to sharpen it, it might be hard to sharpen because one side's really tall, the other side's short, it's not even. Well, that's from coloring just on one side of your pencil. So another thing you can try to remember is while you're coloring, after you've colored for a while on this side of your pencil, turn your pencil a little bit, turn it kind of like over on the other side and keep trying to turn your pencil while you're coloring big areas like this. That way it won't wear down just on one side. And you're gonna have to sharpen your pencil often. Uh, this takes a long time. It takes patience to color, doesn't it? Sometimes we get tired of it. Sometimes you need a break. If you need a break, you can just stop and go do something else for a little while and then come back to it. Because this is a lot of coloring. All right. So one last thing, if you really want to add a little special touch to your picture. See how I used light green here? Well, I took my dark green and I shaded a little bit of dark green on top of the light green at the base or the bottom of my tree. It almost is like a shadow on the grass. So here, I'll do it right here on this tree. See how I have light green there? Well, I'm gonna take some dark green right on top of it. And doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look great? I love how that looks. You can even do it along the edges. A little darker green along the edges of these layers. You might call them layers. Okay, so our landscape is done. Okay, so what I did is I took my finished landscape out of my sketchbook I trimmed the edges just a little bit and I mounted it on some green paper, um, just like I normally do with your artwork in class. But since we're not together, I can't do that for you, but maybe you have some colored paper at home that you wanna mount it on. If you don't, that's okay. You don't have to, you can just leave it right in your sketchbook. Sometimes it's fun to keep things in your sketchbook and it becomes like a sketch diary like a, a, a memory book of all your drawings. Uh, I also signed my picture at the bottom. So if you wanna do that or just put your initials or something, you can do that. So I hope you had fun drawing a landscape with me today. And I wanna encourage you to keep practicing, keep drawing landscapes. And hopefully um, when the weather gets a little bit nicer and we can go outside, maybe when you can go to the park again, you can take your sketchbook with you and draw some landscapes out, outside when you're at the park or in your backyard. So send me pictures of your artwork and have a great week, everybody.